You're listening to this city's finest podcast about the city that this man loves. This is Toronto Mike. What up, my Toronto? VK on the beat. Uh, check. Uh, I'm in Toronto where you wanna get the city love. I'm from Toronto where you wanna get the city love. I'm in Toronto where you wanna get the city love. My city love me back. Welcome to episode 1,521 of Toronto Mike, proudly brought to you by Great Lakes Brewery, a fiercely independent craft brewery who believes in supporting communities, good times, and brewing amazing beer. Order online for free local home delivery in the GTA. Palma Pasta. Enjoy the taste of fresh. Homemade Italian pasta and entrees from Palma Pasta in Mississauga and Oakville. The Toronto Maple Leafs baseball team, the best baseball in the city outside the dome. Join me August 4th at Christie Pitts. I'm recording live at 2 p.m. right after I throw out the first pitch. RecycleMyElectronics.ca Committing to our planet's future means properly recycling our electronics of the past. And Ridley Funeral Home, pillars of the community since 1921. Today, making his Toronto Mike debut and kicking out the jams is Ed Souza. Welcome, Ed. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for making the long trek from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, it's it's getting longer. <laughs> it's getting longer. You could you could have uh, biked here, but yeah, uh, could have. I like that T-shirt. You're wearing an El Macombo T-shirt. Oh, well, you know, you got to represent. Well, we're gonna talk about it because you know a recent episode of Toronto Mike featured Midge Year. Uh, love Midge. Did you listen to that episode? Yes, of I Mike? did. What did yes. you think? Oh, I, I mean, you're great at what you do, so oh. that uh, goes I like you I'm already. <laughs> and Midge is. Uh, one of my favorite humans of all time. He's uh, he's just, he's Midge. I don't know what I can say about him. Now we're kicking out the jams today, which is your, your top 10 songs of all time. I've got them loaded up. We're going to get to them really quickly. And then between the jams, as we talk about why you love the song, we're going to get to know you. Who are you, Ed Souza? What are you up to? I keep hearing about these great bands playing at a bowling alley in Mississauga, and then I'll hear about Souza Palooza happening at the Elma Combo, and I'm like, who is this Ed Souza guy? And I got FOTMs. That means Friends of Toronto Mike. You're now an FOTM, by the way. Thank you. But Perry Lefko, for example, he came to my event on June 27th. It was TMLX 15. I don't think I can compete with Souza Palooza, but uh, we had a good time, and Perry's like telling me about you and he's like you need to have ed souza on and then i'm thinking i do need to have ed souza on so thanks for being here it was money well spent thanks perry <laughs> yeah i got this email perry, perry's like i'm introducing you guys and i'm like let me kick out the jams of ed souza and then you can answer all my annoying questions about who the heck you are and what you're up to i uh, love the hat by the way you had a you. hat when you came in uh, right? absolutely i don't go anywhere without it can't be recognized without it you uh it's your trademark yes that is your branding. Okay, so we're going to get to the first jam right away. And then along the way, again, we'll talk about Sousa Palooza. We'll find out what's going on at this Mississauga Bowling Alley, Classic Bowl. We'll get your story. I got a few fun facts to, to you know, I mentioned the mid-year episode, but I also had uh, Johnny D and Derry from Honeymoon Suite in this basement just about, I don't know, a couple of months ago. You came up in that episode. So we'll cover a lot of ground. We'll even talk some Randy Backman. And uh, I think I've fulfilled my Perry Lefko uh, <laughs> mentions for this episode. But are you ready, my friend? Yes. To kick out the jams? You got to give me a yes on that. Yes, episode. absolutely. And then I'm going to crack a Great Lakes beer. I'm I'm thirsty.
Love it. We're off to a roaring start. Mr. Souza, tell me why you chose this song. Well, I mean, it's it's the cure. How can you not have a cure song in your top 10 of all time? I think it came out in 87, I believe. I know it was kind of towards the late 80s. And, uh, and it was just one of those songs that when you're out on the dance floor, wherever you are, as soon as you hear it, it just... You know, gets into you and you can't stop moving. And fortunate enough to see them. I think they came through about a year and a half ago, give or take. And uh, and Robert Smith is it's incredible. Still has you know that velvet voice. He's he's one of my favorite singers of all time. Really, really good. So it, I couldn't have a top ten without the Cure. So along the way, we're going to find out about this uh, the promotion work you're doing, bringing these great artists like Mid Year, and we'll talk about other bands that you uh, put concerts on for, for 80s heads like Langer. Shout out to Langer who, who goes to all your, he's going to be at Sousa Palooza. He's going to all these events. But uh, The Cure, is this like a wish list band that yeah, you could I mean, bring The Cure? Yes, I only have one rule of thumb because I'm asked religiously uh, to book this band and that band. Uh, <laughs> but I only book bands that I have a certain passion for. Because it takes just as much work to book a band that you're not necessarily a fan of than a band that you are. Can, can I of. just interrupt to tell you sure. that was the philosophy of the Garys, Gary Cormier and Gary Top, longtime promoters, and they, they're the guys who would first bring, uh, uh, they would first bring the Police, for example, to Toronto or um, a whole bunch of bands that they were bringing because they were passionate about the music. And you're uh, taking a, I'm a firm believer a in, from them. I'm a firm believer in that. Because if you don't do that, you're actually doing the artist a disservice because you don't have your heart and soul into promoting the event. You hope it goes well, but the chance of success uh, when you're not 100% behind it is uh, is not good. So again, for me personally, it's just a matter of making sure that I have a tremendous affinity for the band. And, and you know what? Even if you fail, you succeed because you brought a band in that you love. Yeah, and that's the, the payoff. Like <laughs> right. I always tell the band, I said, if nobody comes... I'm I'm still gonna have a great time because right. I mean I'm here because you love the band because I love the band. But is a band like the Cure? I'm curious because we're gonna run down during this conversation. We'll find out some of the great acts you've brought, some of the acts you'd like to bring. But is the Cure at a level where you don't even try? Like it's like at, that's, at the uh, moment, there's no sense in trying. Uh, first of all, their fee is astronomical, and a lot of those bands. What's their fee? I need to know for the next uh, TMLX uh, event. Th their fee are probably around you know seven figures. Give or take. That's real money. That that's real, and that's uh, you know not Canadian money. That's real money. So wow. you got to add you know forty some odd percent on top of that, and then all the pluses that in some cases are are more than the fee. Right. So and plus you know with Live Nation, so you really can't compete with that juggernaut. Do they have a monopoly? Like if a band is in bed with Live yes. Nation, then Ed Souza hands off. Yes. Yeah, Interesting. They, yes. And I hear like the rider, the amount of hairspray you have to provide, uh, that's going to break your bank. Yes. The rider is, is something that's, I mean, it's basically the same. So if you book X band and somebody else books them, they, it's a generic rider. And then you can kind of manipulate it a bit to serve, you know, specific, uh, you know, requests that they may or may not have. I'll give you a perfect example. I yeah. won't mention the artist, but oh. the writer that I received, guess. the writer that I received, a lot of the products that they asked for are no longer available. So all of a sudden you contact him. Because it's by, the writer from the 80s. Yeah. By the way, they you know, tab yeah, this product and the, the reply is, oh, don't worry about it. Just get something else. So it's not, it's not that major of a deal. Okay. It's like when you use an app to go shopping, they're like, hey, they don't have this brand of uh, whatever pasta is it okay if we give you a town pasta mm -hmm. or something like that okay now i would love to know what band that is though of the outdated rider any <laughs> clues do i get a clue and, uh, the only thing i can tell you they're a canadian honeymoon band. suite they're, they're a canadian it's band. honeymoon suite no no it's <laughs> not that's not i don't think right that, I, they, they supply a rider but i shred it because it doesn't really matter they just get what they want so my i, I mean firstly when a band says they will come in the basement here and chat with me i already know they're down to earth like good people like because the i don't think robert smith is coming in the basement you, know you never mean? know uh, and i'll give you a quick story don't give up. Uh, uh, about certain artists that i never yeah thought and we're gonna get your origin story yeah yeah go ahead no you want to do now no no i oh. was gonna say a, a perfect example is having uh let's say mike score from a flock of seagulls never thinking that in my wildest dreams because they've always been my favorite band that i'd have well, an spoiler alert yeah that i'd have an opportunity to uh uh to work with them met mike uh Probably going on 25, 30 years, give or take a year. 
And um, again, on the met him on the off chance at one of the shows. And uh, 25, 30 years later, we we're extremely good friends and uh, couldn't have Sousa Palooza wow. without them. You okay. know, things like that. So you never, yeah, absolutely. People will come in your basement that well, you, know what? You, you never think may come. I think I did have a moment like that. And I'm going to try to relate to you. You know, you're playing in the big leagues. I'm in the, I'm in double A over here trying to uh, be inspired by you. That's why one of the reasons you're here. But like, I will say I had an event at Great Lakes Brewery, which I'm going to crack open a beer just before this next jam. But Danny Graves from The Watchmen uh, came by to play, sing a cappella for us all. At beautiful night sky. Danny Graves singing, what a beautiful singer he is. And I had a moment like that where it's like, oh, this is happening right now. And I made this happen. And I had a moment like that. So that must be how you feel when you get a, a flock of seagulls. Uh, I've too. had, uh, to be honest with you, Mike, I've probably had well over a hundred of those moments. Yeah. And uh, so, and hopefully it, it doesn't change because every day you kind of get up, um, you hope to serve a higher purpose, which is to bring a lot of smiles to individual faces. And, and you're bring doing in, that. And bring in acts that they never thought they'd have the opportunity to see again. All of a sudden they see them and uh, they want to see them again. So after this second jam we kick out, I'm going to get your origin story because, you know, I got to know, like, did you wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to be a concert promoter. Like, I'm going to find out the story after the next jam. But full disclosure Ed Souza, F O T M Ed Souza does not drink. So you've never drank any alcohol. Never. You never. just don't like the taste. Right? I just don't like the taste. It's been great personally from a, uh, a lifestyle standpoint in terms of to put a good roof over my head, good clothes on my back, and uh, but in terms of drinking it, no, never. I've never You're, touched it. You come in handy. You can always be the designated drinker. Uh, I, in high school, that's basically what I, I got invited to. Every single yeah. party. <laughs> and uh but i knew why it wasn't because i was that popular it was because they knew Smart. that they get home safe everyone needs an ed Souza in their life <laughs> uh so i'm gonna crack open a sunny side session ipa but i am gonna send you home with some fresh craft beer one of them actually is non-alcoholic but i'm sure there's people oh. in your family neighbors uh loved ones who will enjoy delicious fresh craft beer brewed right here in southern Etobicoke. Uh, i'm already getting texts stating that the beers accounted for yeah, that was me, not Ed. Okay, so I'm going to be enjoying this as we kick out your second jam, and then we're going to get your origin story. <laughs> good they named it twice it's such a shame talk 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 to me about this song oh, the, this is before I actually get into the song uh, I've been asked numerous occasions uh, which band do you regret not having the opportunity to ever see live and this is actually the only band that uh, that I regret never never seeing live because unfortunately my call has passed on but uh, what I try to do is if I can't get the band, I try to pick off individuals from the band. So back uh, this past April, I do uh, a couple of secret shows a year. Right. So back on April 28th, I had the Escape Club fly in from the UK, which had the number one song, Wild Wild West, that people may remember. Yes. And as special guest, uh, Ian Cornow from Talk Talk came and they performed the song that's kind of more recognizable from uh, Talk Talk that uh, no doubt covered It's My Life. Of course. And uh, they played that live, which again brought the house down. So, and, uh, but Talk Talk is again one of those bands that uh, never had the opportunity to see and wish I had. 
Just last night, we recorded our quarterly FOTM cast, and the VP of Sales, Tyler Campbell, was at that secret show with the Escape Club. How did he you like tell it? me about it? He loved it. Yeah. He had a great time. Uh, the so. advantage we have with those, uh, not necessarily just the secret show, secret shows are great, but just for our uh, R&B sessions, uh, we only limit it to 100 some odd people, so they become true fans of the, of the artist. There's a Q&A component. That uh, you know, the artist will tell the fans how songs came about. Oh, this is like intimate and interactive. Yeah, yeah. How you know, you name it. Yeah. How even the interaction between uh, members of the band. Uh, the second secret show that we held uh, back on May 26th this year was Yard of Noise. Oh yeah. Out of the UK, which hadn't been to Canada since uh, 1986. Wow. So that was quite a get for us. Okay, so we've teased. Like, who the hell is this Ed Souza doing this? So I'm going to read a note from the live stream, live.torontomike.com. This is from Rob Del Mundo. He goes, I got to catch up with Ed last May at the Rick Emmett. He actually put at the FOTM Rick Emmett. Good boy, Rob. Okay, the FOTM Rick Emmett show at Classic Bowl. I found out that Ed married one of my old high school classmates. So there's a little connection you got to FOTM Rob Del Mundo, who does a great job writing about hockey. Give us the origin story. When did you start promoting concerts? Like, where does this come from? Who the hell are you, Ed? The the first show that I actually ever promoted, uh, 1989, uh, Bare Naked Ladies. And uh, I got a call out of the blue from uh, Don Burns, the old uh, program director from CFNY. Of course. And my parents' house was a five-minute walk from CFNY, sorry, CFNY radio station in Brampton. So I was operating a business at the time, got a call from Don Burns. He says, Ed, we're trying this new thing. We're going to introduce some Canadian talent. Uh, there's going to be about 30, 40 people there, some VIPs, some industry types. And I said, yeah, no problem. So I'm standing at the back of our lounge, seeing these five kids walk in. Granted, at, at that time, they were my age as but well. what lounge? Like- I was in uh, Transworld. We had a okay. location out, out in uh, Brampton. Okay. And uh, seeing them walk in, go to our mini stage we had set up. Next thing I know, they're playing, you know, some quirky song. You know, if I had a million dollars, don't quote me on the song, but I'm fairly but certain like the, it was that the, one. The, the famous uh, independent yellow tape. Uh, yeah. And sure. uh, so as if I, I'm kind of being transported back to that day, uh, I turned to one of my staff members and verbatim, I said, these guys ain't going anywhere. What? Okay. Yeah. A- and uh, caught up with um, <laughs> one of the members who, uh, Kevin Hearn, who also plays with Rough Trade. FOTM, Kevin Hearn, yeah. And uh, so I was telling Rob, I, uh, sorry, I was telling Kevin, Kevin. I go, uh, Kevin, you know, back and he said, Ed, you know how many times they heard that story in terms of so many people had, uh, t- and I mean, phenomenal guys and extremely sure. talented have made Canada proud. But like certain artists who are phenomenal individuals, it's just not my genre. Not your cup of tea. Not, not my cup of tea or my it's cup of coffee It's an acquired taste, you know. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. You don't drink tea <laughs> no, either. No, Okay, no beer, no tea. If just you have coffee. Over. Yeah, just coffee. How do you take your coffee? A uh, regular. One cream, one sugar, and I'm good. Okay. I'm a, I like my coffee black, but I do love a good cup of coffee. Absolutely. But Bare Naked Ladies, an acquired taste. Now, I... I'm younger than you, uh, and I know you're having a milestone birthday for this Sousa Palooza, which we'll get to. So I'm guessing we're exactly a decade apart. This yeah. is my guess based on the fact I had a milestone birthday like a week ago. That's where I saw Perry Lefko. Now, I think it hit me right. Like, I actually really loved the yellow tape and became a big Bare Naked Ladies fan. And I was listening to a lot of CFNY, and they were playing the hell out of that album, and I loved it. But I think they were kind of at that time lumped in with like Corky and the Juice Pigs, like a sillier kind of a comedy rock type thing. And you're a, ser- you're a serious man, Ed. You don't have time for this. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I don't, I didn't have time for silliness. Uh, for those that know me, know me, that's not true. But, <laughs> but back in the day, I mean, you got to keep in mind. But you were, you were dead wrong, of course. Yeah, of course. that band went As on to have a you, number I've, one billboard hot 100 I've learned hits. a lot more from my failures than my successes. The, uh, but remember growing up, in late 70s, early 80s. Mm-hmm. So the music that influenced me and all of a sudden here comes the Bare Naked Ladies. It right. was like, what the hell? They were goofy. And, and then actually it became worse because then when grunge came out, the only thing that I could think about was, oh, please, can you guys just take a shower? <laughs> That's the only thing that kept entering my mind and they killed the 80s. Yeah, well, and, they killed the hair metal. Yeah, anyway. and, and I just, 80s, uh, yeah. I, uh, like I couldn't, get, couldn't get that out of my head. And to this day, I, I, I just... 
those bands don't i just can't imagine 20 30 years from now to have a 90s revival i'm not saying i won't be around in 30 I'm years spearheaded buddy i want to be the ed souza of the 90s <laughs> yeah, revival yeah, yeah. like good, that's what good, i want to be good, good luck man. <laughs> so now we know we won't hear any uh, grunge in this uh, no. countdown and we won't hear any bare naked ladies it's funny because i listen to a podcast called indie cast in fact that's where we got the name fotm cast from is this podcast i i listen to cam gordon turned me on to it and these two guys were talking just today about how the Bare Naked Ladies are the worst band of all time. And no, nobody, how, I can't remember the quote. It was something like, uh, no one did it worse or something. Some quote like that. Like these two guys, particularly this one guy, was going off on BNL. And I was thinking, oh, I really like BNL. And my good friend FOTM Brian Dunn is going to hear this and be devastated but you are on the band the the anti now the guys are great we've established that but the anti BNL bandwagon in terms of music not your cup of coffee yes yes okay yes. so you got you did that for now Don Burns uh, unfortunately is no longer with us yeah he was also DJ Trance on uh Energy 108 yes, but prior to uh, to Don Burns uh, yeah. the gentleman that I got to give I mean almost all the credit is Mr. David Marsden, who was actually Mars the program, Bar. yeah, Mars Bar, the program director prior to uh, to Don Burns, who brought every band that I just love, uh, broke them in Canada from, of course, the the Flock of Seagulls to the Depeche Modes to the Simple Minds, the Duran Durans. I could go on and on and on, and uh, so got to uh, got to know David over the last little while. He's been instrumental in uh, in our success. So I want to publicly thank him if uh, if he's listening. Thanks, he, David. He's listening. David's been over here, and we had him in the schedule to return, and he had a health scare, and I wanted to give him some time to feel better. And I feel like maybe because now he's back doing his uh, NY the Spirit show, I think maybe David's ready to return. Yeah, encyclopedia, bring, bring David back on. I mean, the, his wealth of knowledge, and uh, it's it's just phenomenal. L love David. So CFNY was your station of choice. Yeah, it was the only one. And keep it in mind, again, living in Brampton and five minutes away, we still, the reception was horrible. It was like one of these things, you know, the rabbit ears, left finger out, right leg left, and it was just horrible. So we, the, the only thing that we, the only time we get reception was literally after 11 p.m., so can I ask you, because I know at some point with the Pete and Geet show, they get a transmitter on the CN Tower. Yes. So before that, you're talking about... Yes, well this, before yes, that. Weak signal, well uh, before Right that. on uh, Clarence and Kennedy and Brampton for uh, the Brampton listeners and anybody that knows CFNY's history. Spanky's, I don't know if you're familiar with, they had a bar underneath that a lot of the bands that they used to bring in for interviews used to play down at Spanky's. And my sister-in-law, <laughs> I'll never forget this as well, didn't know her at the time. Uh, but her uh, her boyfriend, who later became her husband, had to forge his license <laughs> in order to get in to see Images and Folk <laughs> perform at Spanky's. Okay, so. another teaser for what you might hear coming up. Uh, uh. And uh, so, but like I said, that's where the affinity uh, for the music came from. But of course, in you know, CKLC back in the day, they had the Top 40 Countdown from Hamilton right, and Chum AM and on and on and on but cfny was so the, let's uh, shout out some specific uh talent on uh cfny now i've had as, as many chats as i can i'm personally fascinated with the spirit of radio era of cfny and collecting these stories there's an episode you need to listen to ed 1021 1021 where i have marsden on i got scott turner on that may potts ivor hamilton's on this episode uh alan cross is on this episode you've really got it. liz janik is on this zoom I got as many people as I could collect from this uh, this great era in uh, in in radio. You got to listen to episode one, and, and you know that the documentary is coming out soon. Oh, gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Between Ivor Hamilton, Scott Turner, and uh, Alan Cross, I feel like I'm a co-producer of this thing. But yeah, it should be coming out I'm in the fall. I'm really really looking forward to that. I'll see you at the uh, premiere for sure. We'll be uh, we'll be there together. Let's kick out another jam, and then I'll get more see if and why you know uh, answers out of you. Here we go. I love how this sounds in the cans. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tell me about your love for craft work. I distinctly again remember the uh, first time I heard craft work, and it was like, what the F is this? It was just so distinctive a sound that, you know, never heard of it before. Uh, a lot of people don't know about me. Prior to this kind of genre change, uh, my favorite band as a kid growing up was Backman Turn Overdrive. Loved, I mean, you know, known as Lumberjack Rock. Loved Backman Turn Overdrive. And hopefully I'll have the opportunity to, to meet Randy and tell him that personally because they're going to be in town on August the 24th as part of uh, Boomstock at the uh, the new bowl at York University. And all of a sudden, to hear craft work, talk about like <laughs> 180. <laughs> and I've never looked back since. And right around that time, the, the cars... Came out in uh, 77, 78, I believe, because uh, the robots was from Man Machine, I think was the same thing about 77, 78. And to segue into The Cars, one of my all-time favorite bands, and again, since you can't get the whole band and The Cars specifically because Rick or, uh, sorry, Benjamin or passing on and Rick passing on. So the only member that's really carrying The Cars flag nowadays from a live perspective is um, Greg Hawks. So we're going to have Greg Hawks and his band at the Elmo uh, actually next Saturday, July the 20th. Cool. So really. And there, he's performing the debut album in its entirety, plus uh, all the hits. And that's one tracks. of the great debuts in the history of rock. Uh, and roll. Uh, of all time. Okay. And uh, the Cars are one of the bands that uh, performed at the Elmo in 1978 and actually have their name on the iconic Elmo steps. Not many bands do, but the cars right. do. So we're kind of really looking for it. But to circle back to Kraftwerk, yeah. Sure. I mean, the sound was so distinctive that... Yeah, but how do you... Is That's jarring to go from BTO. You know, you're taking care of business to taking care of calculators. Here, here, here's what I can tell you, Mike. At a very young age, remember, we're like sponges. We that's, have no, so remember, much yeah. headroom <laughs> right. that we absorb everything. And it's not necessarily of kicking anything out of your mind. It just keep adding. Now, when we get to be our age, more mine than yours, there's really not a lot of headspace left. So uh, people always right. ask me, well, how come the new artists, every time they release an album, like they don't really get any play, nobody knows about it. I said, well, if you're already maxed out upstairs, what <laughs> song are you going to kick out in order to have a new one? You're not. You're not going to kick there's out. There's no more enough. room there's, for these Taylor Swift no, songs. There's no more room. So uh, that's why new artists, I mean... They release new material and people will say, yeah, it's great, but they're not. And relating it even to Honeymoon Suite, because uh, right. heard heard the, uh, the podcast you had with Johnny and Derry. Hey, what did you think? Oh, the, the, again, incredible. Thanks for the shout out, Johnny, by the way. I'll be your manager when I retire. <laughs> <laughs> he was a sweetheart. Derry, now Derry was great too, but but Johnny, you could there was something about Johnny where he was like just so kind of like so humble and kind of happy to be chatting with you. He, he was this that, That's how he is. Uh, the question that I get asked the most often about Johnny for people that don't know him, they say, "Is he approachable?" Cuz sometimes Johnny may give out the air that he's not, but he's the most appro approachable individual that uh, uh you know that you can meet. Right. A super super guy. And even afterwards, questions he was asking me where he was like just sincerely interested in like, I'm not sure he knew where he was going. Somebody said, hey, go to this guy's basement and talk to him. And I mean, he's like, OK, what, whatever. And then he was just so curious about everything and how it all works and that what just happened. And he was really impressed with the yeah, chat. A quick sweetheart. Quick story about Johnny. Yeah. Uh, back through COVID, I believe it was in, it was in 2020, uh, later in the year. Uh, I started this uh, a new thing called VIP and Me, which was an opportunity similar to Cameo for individuals that know Cameo about stars and artists wishing someone, you know, happy birthday, anniversary, and that kind of stuff. The only difference between what we did and what they were doing, ours were going to be live. So the artists were actually going to wish someone a happy birthday uh, live. So a lady contacted me and she says, Ed, my sister's turning 50. She's a massive Johnny D fan. Are you able to get Johnny? I said, you know, I'll contact Johnny and see if he's interested. So I contacted Johnny. 
And I said, Johnny, uh, I was contacting this lady, a massive fan of yours. Her sister's willing to pay, you know, a fairly substantial fee to get you on to wish your sister happy birthday. It'll be, you know, maybe 20 minutes and all that. And Johnny goes, no, Ed, I don't, I don't really do that. And he goes, it's not about the money. It's just that I, I, I don't do that. And if I'll gladly wish somebody happy birthday when I see them. But, you know, I don't want to wish him happy birthday through any type of Zoom meeting or anything of that nature. Because that's the type of person Johnny is. It wasn't anything to do with the money because it was it was going to be a fairly hefty, uh, you know, 20-minute payday. And he just wasn't interested in that. He was more interested. He says, listen, next time she's at one of our shows, please bring her up to me. I'll gladly wish her a happy birthday. Yeah, he's a really, really cool guy. S- sweetheart of a man. Okay. So before we get to the next jam, I wanted to just follow up. So y- you said an 89... 89- Don Burns asks you to put together yes. a uh, Bare Naked Ladies show. Yeah. So that's a pre-Gordon Bare Naked Ladies. So this is post-Yellow Tape, but pre-Gordon. Yes. Okay, I remember this era well. Do you remember the McDonald's girl cover? No. They had, okay, so you were I never followed you, Bare Naked you Ladies, didn't, you remember? Didn't, yeah, you didn't give a <laughs> crap about b okay? No, 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 no. I, I didn't say that in case they're listening. No, the I people mean, are done sweethearts. Done you said the people are good. Yes, yes. I mean, Tyler Stewart, man, he's listening right now. The drummer doesn't miss a Toronto mic episode. That's a great band, but it's not going to be everybody's cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've changed it for you, man. Cup Thank of coffee. You. Now, where do you go from there? You just, you, you, that, you know, you wet your beak with that and you're like, oh, I can do this. Yeah, and, and but you know what happens is uh, life gets in the way. I got married in uh, 93, opened up another business. Uh, my son was born in 96. My daughter was born in uh, in 97. Kids and, ruin everything, you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not listening, so yes, no, they don't. And, uh, and then, you know, all these, uh, you know, late nights, early mornings, and then all these car rides to gymnastics practice, uh, football practice, and all. So uh, when I do things, I really want to dedicate 100%. If I can't do it right, I'm not going to do it at all. So kind of took some time off from that. And when they, they got a little bit older, then kind of started dipping my toe back into it. And and Mike's score was, uh, again, massive influence on uh, uh, for me t- to get back in terms of uh, start booking shows. and And then... Pardon the pun, the, the ball started rolling and uh, it's continuing to to roll. Well, we'll talk more about uh, Flock of Seagulls later in this jam kicking. Uh, I'm going to kick out this next jam of yours because I was having a Facebook chat with a great FOTM who was involved with this band. And I told him, I teased him basically, that we were going to play something from this act and he'll be listening. So let's kick this out and then we'll talk about it. It hits hard No doubt When the truth lies there Like that So unashamed Unstained I never lied Or told the truth Images in Vogue. Can I tell you how difficult it is, Mike, to listen to these great songs and I'm not able to sing along? You with can them. sing along. It, it, it's Your so, mic's open. What it, do I it, care? It, it's so difficult. Sing along. It's, no, no, you never want to ruin a. Hi, Dale. If Dale Martindale's listening, he lives about. Dale's about maybe 10 minutes from my house. Really? Yeah. yeah he lives we in Brampton. him on Toronto, Mike. Yeah, he's about 10 minutes from my house. Uh, Again, an individual that uh, people say, what's Dale like? Again, that's another question I get asked so often. What's this person like? What's that? They're like you and me. Just go up to them. Say hi, Dale. Dale's a great guy. Phenomenal. <laughs> and I like to imitate Dale when he sings. Because Dale is like the, um, what's his name from, uh, the name escapes me now, from the Furs, uh, Richard, uh, Richard Butler. And uh, so, I mean, his man, his stage presence, and that's such a great voice. And this song is... Again, you can't have a uh, 
a top 10 of all time without Canadian talent. You just, especially from this genre, it, it's impossible. An image is in vogue. I've, I could be wrong, but I don't know if I am. I think I've booked images in vogue more than anyone has in Canada. I just, they're just one of my favorites. Okay, so that's a great segue. So we, you took a break, you had kids, life got in the way, you're, you know, starting these businesses. But so be specific. How do you get back into the, um, you know, music promotion game? Well, again, uh, met or Mike. Concert promotion. Uh, met Mike on the off chance. And I said, Mike, our... Uh, from Flock of Seagulls. From Flock of Seagulls, Mike Score. And I said, Mike, um, do you do any private shows? He said, Ed, here's... Uh, I'm just fortunate enough that people still know who I am. Right, because I mean, a lot of the '80s artists are here and they're gone, right? So for him, it was just a matter of very humble and just well, if people want to book me, I'll gladly, I'll gladly perform. And so that was in the early 2000s. Okay. And then booked him for a show, and after the show, he says that from now on, uh, you don't have to contact anybody else; just deal with me directly. Awesome. And and then from there, kind of morphed into another act and another. Well, act. what venues are we talking about? Uh, we're specifically in uh, in Mississauga, a classic bowl, and okay. then we've done X number of shows, uh, like people's residence. A lot of the shows we do even private. Somebody's anniversary, oh, birthday. You know, it's uh, so it kind of runs the gamut of. Uh, where we've done shows at Revival, the other venue in Toronto that we've done shows at. So okay, I need more info on Classic Bowl. So I, I often hear, you know, we have an FOTM community and we have a, a, a chat group on WhatsApp and so many, t- you know, we have similar demos, right? Yeah. Like, so it's like, I'll hear from people that they're going to Classic Bowl to see this band. Midtown Gord, for example, is going to got to see Lee Aaron at Classic Bowl. I get all these notes and I'm like, what a bowling alley like i'm always like so what do you mean and then i had somebody explain explain the setup to me because I, I think it was i don't know if it was midtown gord or michael lang or whatever Maybe it's something it was, to behold mike you have to you have to come out to one where of the shows. is it it's at the corner of winston churchill and dundas okay. so it's at the dundas is the dividing line between oakville and mississauga so you cross the street you're into into oakville uh, okay. so oakville is on the south side and the saga is on the north side and we have also a private lounge where we do our heineken stage where we do our intimate sessions, and then when I'm going to start calling this the Great Lakes Brewery Stage. I like that idea. See, okay, you so you got a Heineken stage. We have a Heineken stage, okay, and then we have our main stage when we put our uh, Mukbul concert series, which is now the largest indoor music festival in North America because it runs not in terms of attendance because we only were maxed at a certain capacity, right. but in terms of length. So now it runs for literally five days. We started off with one day back, uh, actually this year would have been, sorry, next year would have been the uh, 10th anniversary, but we had to take two years off. So next year will be the eighth. Oh, I'm and, sure COVID got in the way. Uh, yeah. And so we started with one day <laughs> yeah. and uh, it was a charity for Ron McDonald House. So we wanted to bring some attention to the house and uh, not, not knowing how it was going to do and sold out. So then I said, you know what? I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm going to try it again and bring back the same two artists, which were the Spoons and Honeymoon Suite. So did exceptionally well. And then I said, okay, one more time. Then I believe I brought in, I think it was the box out of Montreal. So they came in. Yeah. So, and then bands. that did really, really well again. And I said, well, I, I've maxed out. I can't, <laughs> you know, unless it runs the whole day, which people our age, more my, than yours again, Mike, I said, it'll be too yeah, I'm long. catching up to yeah, you. Buddy. So I said, you know, why don't we add a second day? So we added a second day and then... Uh, we, I said, same thing. Okay, what can we do? So added a third day. And now we have a, a pre McBull show, which we started last year. Actually, Johnny and Derry, again, coming full circle, were the, the first two artists performing for our pre McBull show, which, again, is a part of our intimate sessions. Yeah. And this year we had Rick Emmett. These are, you coming. know, these are all people who've been on this show. They're, these are sweethearts, great artists. I got questions. I got more questions about the bowling alley. But first, I want you, if you take a moment, talk about this charity, Ronald McDonald yeah, House. Ron Why Mc- that charity? Uh, uh, Ronald McDonald House is a, a charity that's near and dear to my heart. Back for people that don't know the story, uh, my nephew back in 1987, at the age of 12, got diagnosed with leukemia, and uh, my sister stayed at the house uh, until his passing, which was Halloween night in 1992. So for I'm the sorry. five years off and on, he stayed at Ronald McDonald House. So I saw uh, from. A, literally being hands-on uh, what the house was like and what it did for, uh, you know, my sister, like her family, because she had, uh, you know, other children as well and for my brother-in-law and that. And so I told myself, I said, if there's ever going to be a charity that I'm going to pour my heart and soul into, it's going to be that one. It, it took a while because, like I said, his passing was in uh, in 92, so started this up uh, close to 10 years ago. 
And uh, now literally outside of McDonald's, uh, I believe we're the largest supporter uh, in terms, not just of uh, monetary, but more importantly, in terms of the publicity that's created, because no one's going to donate money to a charity if they don't know what it's all about. Awareness. Yeah, Absolutely. awareness. Is, so first, I got to make sure my sincere condolences. That's that's very sad to hear what what, what happened with your nephew there. That's very sad. Uh, yeah, he's in a, he's in a good place. I mean, he suffered a lot, and uh, we did everything we could. And again, the house was very instrumental in terms, of at least, easing the pain. Uh, while uh, my sister specifically was was staying at the house, and the house now is not what the house is like back then. Because in eighty seven, it was literally just one floor, x number of rooms. Now it's like multi floors, has its own cinema, its own gym, wow. its own school. So if anyone has a has an opportunity, and yeah, I think it's on McCall Street downtown. You know, please stop by, and and if you have any money to donate, they'll gladly take it off your hands. Good on you, Ed, yeah. for raising the awareness and for helping to raise funds for this tremendous uh, charity. That's a wonderful thing. Oh uh, well, do. being on a show also helps, Mike. So thank you. Well, listen, you, you had me you had me at mid year. Okay, <laughs> you had me at mid year. Now, bowling. Let's get back to the bowling for a moment, and then we're gonna get to a jam, which I'm gonna dedicate to a, a beloved FOTM <laughs> who visits me once a month. But I I used to bowl all the time when I was in high school. We had a bowling alley on Islington called O'Connor Bowl. Yeah, I remember that. And during breaks in school, shout out to Joe from TO. We would drive from <laughs> Michael Power High School to O'Connor Bowl, which was just down the street, and we would we would bowl, and I loved it. Like, uh, I loved it. Uh, uh, people may not know this about me, Mike, but I've actually bowled a 300. That's a perfect game. That's 12 strikes in a row in one game. No, I know what 300 is, and, and I'm, <laughs> listen, you're, you're, you know, I remember the, the turkeys and everything, but yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you, you're wearing an El Macombo shirt, and it's a cool shirt, but I would have a shirt that just says, I bowled a 300 yeah, game. I've, uh, and I have the ring to pr- prove it, I, I, and I also bowled a 299. I was one short of the big one, as they say. And How then, did that feel, though? I, oh, I would be up at it, night. It was, it was torture. That's and, gotta be the worst. Uh, and then about six months later, I actually bowled a 300. I actually have it. At, so you're a hell of a bowler. The, I haven't bowled in, like, quite a while just because of all the uh, the business well, you, you've I just been don't... to the top of mount everest yeah, what are you yeah, gonna well, where are you gonna go from here yeah where and are you gonna go? uh but you yeah, actually have a plaque in my office so people go no so i said see look and it's uh it, it's there i've i've actually done it yes how did you become involved with classic bowl like do you uh, work back, for classic bowl? Yeah, what's your, what's your yeah, deal Ed? I, i'm a director for the company so uh been there since uh since so one and i just thought that Long time. Uh, yeah i just thought that music was a, a perfect vehicle to, to promote the business. And to your you point, can't bowl during the concert, you, right? No, not during the, okay. the McBowl concert series, Up but in, during the intimate sessions, which is held, again, in the uh, oh, private the, lounge. The, you the can. Heineken? Is that the yeah, Heineken? the Heineken room, which you can. But I thought... you I'm know, getting again, a text from Great Lakes. Stop <laughs> saying Heineken. Okay, guys. Uh, stop uh, saying Heineken. Growing, growing up in... Uh, in the 80s, yeah. what did we do? We bowled, we roller skated, <laughs> right? And we listened to music. So yeah. what a perfect opportunity to... Uh, uh, to marry the two because you're not let's face it uh the like my kids like my 22 year old is probably not coming out to see spoons at uh classic bowl so that demo that you're targeting that is a demo with the warm fuzzies i have for bowling and, and they have the discretionary income right right so think about it this way so when we're kind of going through you know the early marriage uh, young children so our time is completely right. consumed so once they're self-sufficient, they've moved on. So now we, in a sense, recuperate our youth. And now we're back to doing what we did as kids. And music is one of the things that we love to do as kids. Okay, I'll have more uh, questions on the other side of this tremendous jam. And I just want to shout out the, uh, you will, three people on this song are FOTM. So I'm just uh, bragging about that, Ed. I can't get, you know, uh, mid-year to come to my birthday party. But three of these Band members are FOTMs. We'll talk more about it on the other side. I can tell you that Rob Proust lent his old keyboard to uh, Gord. He calls him Gord Spoons, who uh, composed this on Rob's old keyboard. And and Gord uh, started composing this song after going to see OMD in Hamilton and coming home. And literally waking up and that tune, whatever was in his mind. And he started kind of, that's how it came about after listening to uh, OMD. And it kicks ass. Let's listen.
right, two things. Ed, I love it. Love it so much. Sounds great in the headphones here. And two, talk to me about Spoons. Uh, Spoons, again, one of those bands that uh, I probably booked more than anyone else has. They're, they're just, can't say enough about them. Gord, Sandy, been there from the beginning. Uh, great individuals. And it's so much fun to work with people that are not just, again, great at what they do, professionally but just great individuals it makes things go go a lot easier and you know going back when i first heard nova heart it was like where's this coming from and wow and they're from burlington that's not too far away how did that happen because at right. the time i was listening to a lot of uk artists of course and not having you know a lot of our own artists to listen to right. but spoons were just one of those bands that uh, res again resonated with me and it stuck ever since and like, i and can't I believe really these guys are from burlington and that's uh, that was what i thought back then as well never thought that uh you know listening to them that they would they'd be one of our own and one of the best that we've uh, we produced and as you know they just received the keys to the city last uh, couple of weeks ago, well deserved yeah well deserved did you think they sold out when they appeared in like ads for stitches and stuff like yeah that? <laughs> you know what i mean it's a stitch i think no i think it was thrifties wasn't it was it thrifties I think it was okay thrifties. okay yeah, you might yeah. be right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think I was very young stitches was known for you okay. know you buy one you get okay. 20 for free i think that was that was stitches yeah. i'm mixing up my uh clothiers <laughs> of the uh the listen i bought days. a lot of my clothes back then at the big steel <laughs> well they did they did a max l cassette ad too right did they i feel like they, they might have i should uh, they check out they did a bunch they, of ads back then what they should do and yeah. i can't believe that no uh car companies got in contact with for romantic traffic i mean so many car ads and to this day i, I still can't believe that no no car company no advertising agency has jumped on that bandwagon oh i'm with you so much especially since uh my dear friend rob Proust has a, a co-writing credit on romantic traffic they, uh, so nova heart here is a gore depth song but the romantic traffic uh was i think the room might have wrote that one but uh love that you kicked out some spoons and i do have a note on the live stream from midtown gourd who i actually referenced earlier in the program and he says sorry for tuning in late unacceptable midtown gourd <laughs> you, although we did start early yes we did we i did. told people we, two o'clock we so did okay. we did I saw Lee Aaron on the Heineken stage and then Honeymoon Suite and Street Heart with Lee Aaron on the whole stage. Yes. So, yeah, he's Ask a, him what he thinks. Well, I, I, could, I don't need it. <laughs> to let us know what you think, Midtown Gord. Uh, and, and Jeremy Hopkin is on the live stream and he talks about how much he loved Nova Heart. But I think most of us uh, loved and still do love Nova Heart. That song is just fantastic. And it's been covered by, uh, and I'm sure you know this as well, Mike. Uh, through COVID, we worked on the Echo CD that they uh, uh, that they had. With we brought in a different artist to to perform the song, and one of them was an artist that uh, I have to take a little bit of credit for uh, putting back together. Strange Advance, uh, Strange Advance covered Nova Hard, which is I'm not going to say it's the best track on the album, but I don't know if there's a better track on the album than uh, than that one. And they performed that as part of their encore. Uh, Street, uh, sorry, uh, Strange Advance does. And uh, so, yeah, there's uh, a lot of a lot of synergy between uh, all these bands. Did you listen to the very recent visit to my basement yes. by Drew Arnold? Yes, and yeah. we did a whole yeah. Strange. Yeah. And I was with them that uh, that night. So you know what your name? No wonder I had to finally book you on Toronto Mike because <laughs> your name had been like uh, ringing in my ear for a long time now, and I'm like, uh, well, we've. Uh, but I think we were worlds away. Worlds no, away. no puns and no pun intended there. <laughs> no, that was totally intended. Come on, uh, absolutely. <laughs> my goodness gracious! So shout out to Spoons. Uh, love those guys. They're sweethearts too. I mean, would you work of assholes? If it was an asshole band, would uh, we the, even bother? The, with here's them? the thing: you never know if they're going to be asses until you actually book them. Uh, certain people, you know, get along with certain people. Other people don't for whatever reason. And if I book artists for the first time, there's always that little apprehension. You know, what are they like? I mean, they come with preconceived notions, but, you know, you're dealing with them at a certain level. So maybe other people are dealing with at a different level. And I'll give you a perfect example, like with yeah. the Art of Noise that we just had here. I mean, nobody's been able to bring him over to Canada since 1986. Which is wild. Which is incredible. And we kept him over for the secret show and nobody knew. So imagine the Art of Noise performing in front of 100 people. It's like literally they're performing in your basement and you're calling your buddies over to say, listen, the Art of Noise is here. Do you want to come by and you know, see them perform? That's yeah. basically what it's like. Wow. So uh, didn't know what they were like. 
first time, of course, booking them. And they were, I'm telling you, I, again, can't say enough good things about them. They, uh, and we'll have some news coming up on oh, wow. the Art of Noise uh, coming up very soon. Okay. Uh, so people should. Uh, you don't want to break that news here? Uh, no, because uh, I can't. I can't as of yet because it's not Perry official. Does Perry Lefko know? Does he no, know? no, he doesn't even know. Then, no. But then it may, everybody would know. But it may be in the book that Perry's writing. No. <laughs> Where's he at with that book? Uh, we're, he talked we're, to me we're, about that book yeah, at TMLX 15. Yeah, we're, we're starting on it. I mean, we kind of go back to the genesis of, uh, you know. Is the name uh, of the book Sousa Palooza? No. It's oh. the, that's the, the concert series, which will be held but on you an can annual use that basis. Name. Come on. Tom Wilson uses the name, uh, this, uh, beautiful scars for everything. Yeah, no. Musical it, albums. Song, it'll be, uh, books. we actually uh, put it out online and we uh, narrowed the options down to 10, but people could have submitted their own title. And, uh, because our brand is Sousa, the whatever it happens to be. So it's going to be titled Sousa, the book. And Sousa, that's a Portuguese name, That's right? a Portuguese name, yeah. And you were born in Portugal? Yes, I was born actually in the middle of the Atlantic, uh, the Azores, which a lot of people don't even know. I remember when immigrated in 74 at the age of 10, uh, having, you know, grade four maps of the world, and it wasn't even listed. So too small. Yeah. Way too small. And then all of a sudden people go, where are you from? And I go, right here. And they go, well, where's here? I don't see anything there. I go, yeah, it's 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 there. <laughs> and that was kind of a, a, a learning curve, but... Uh, and then being here today with you, yeah, I, I kind of come a to, long way, baby. I kind of pinch myself every day, and that will be part of the book. Coming over to immigrating to a new country, uh, not speaking the language, and then not seeing your dad for two years, and being the baby of five. To this day, I'm still babied by my two older brothers, two older sisters. So it's, uh, it, it, I've been blessed again. It, it's been a good life. Can't complain. It's a good life if you don't weaken. Yeah. Now, one quick. Before I move on to the next jam, we got five more great jams to go. Yeah. Next time you have, because I remember, I think it was very recently, you had a concert you were promoting, I think at Classic Bowl, which had both Spoons and Honeymoon Suite. Is that correct? Uh, not, well, not to, well on the uh, same, not on the same uh, part of the same concert series, but different nights. Oh, different nights. Different nights. That's okay. part of our McCool concert series, okay. which ran for three days. On the first day, we had uh, Saga. Nights. Okay. Harlequin and Images in Vogue. Wow. On the second day, we had Honeymoon Suite, Streetheart, Lee Aaron. Plus, we brought in the uh, Lee, uh, sorry, Derry's daughter, Leah Marlene, to also from American Idol to perform. So we actually oh. had four artists. Okay. And then on the Saturday night, we had The Art of Noise, we had Spoons, and then we had Bowie Revisited, which is an incredible a Bowie band out of Montreal that has two box m members, Daniel and Francois. So that was... Okay, so different. Only because if I thought I heard, and I'm, now it turns out I'm wrong, as usual. Uh, Robert Lawson <laughs> just jumped out of the bushes and told me, <laughs> wrong again, Mike. <laughs> Remind me to bring up Robert later in regards sure, to sure. Randy Backman, actually, because sure. I got homework for you. But if you ever did have Spoons and Honeymoon Suite on the same day... We, we've had. Okay, but, yeah. Okay, you have had. Okay, I've, okay, you have had. Okay, I'm not going actually, nuts Actually, two... Here. Okay. Twice. Okay. Two, so, the first right. two two you years. Have said that earlier. I thought first, it was wrong. No, the first two years of McBold. That's who we had. We had honeymoon. Next Sweden time spoons. you do that, you have to invite special guest Rob Pruce because Rob Pruce played keyboards for all the hits from Spoons, and then he went on to play keyboards. Rob has an open invitation. For he knows honeymoon suite. He knows that I've communicated with Rob okay. X number of times, including for because Rob's he's the own link. Yeah, including Rob's personal performances. So he doesn't even have to play with any of those bands. He can. You can give rob his own show and he's performed when i booked uh, rough trade at the elmo rob was a keyboard player he did yeah that's the thing with a uh, church of trees yeah uh, absolutely they're all connected here everyone's connected here carol pope to great fotm okay let's kick out another jam Ed, sing with me. 
anybody. <laughs> and I don't want to ruin the song, Mike. I only, I only do it in my car. Car and shower. People know how to scream the song <laughs> afterwards. Okay, talk to me. Uh, this is, I mean, again, from the first time I heard this song, it, it was it was hook, line, and sinker. I well, it's mean, a great opening line, right? Oh, this is, I mean, again, it, uh, the advantage of all these songs, it literally takes you back to a specific point in time. Music is literally the only art form that can, a painting can't do that, even though I'm an avid reader. I, I can't remember when I read, like, my favorite book of all time is 1984. I can't remember when I first read. I've read it multiple times, but I can't remember the first time I read. We're 19- living it now, right? Yeah, 1984. And, uh, but all of a sudden hearing that, being in high school, I remember uh, one of our friends, uh, John, and I can't remember his last name, but I know his first name was John, came in, he had one of these big, you know, boom players. Of course, boom box. Boom boxes. And well, our, we usually have another name for it, but we it, evolved. Exactly, we yeah. Evolved. And uh, right across the street, a good Catholic boy, so went to Cardinal H.A. High School in Brampton. We had a park across the street where we could actually smoke. And all of a sudden, first thing in the morning, he comes in with this big boom box, and this is playing. I go, what the hell? Yeah. And uh, and actually, I got to know Martin, who actually started the band, who's also then left the band to perform uh, to form Heaven Seventeen. So hopefully, we'll have some news on uh, on them as well. I gotta say, I am impressed because you're following your passions and you're make you're doing it. You're putting in the work and you're doing it. Honestly, huge inspiration for me as I sit here now because I'm trying to do something on a much smaller scale. But I can see down the road, you've got the blueprint I can follow to bring all those '90s Canadian alt rock bands that I adore. Do the same thing for them. But you can. Lusty, <laughs> lowest of the low. I could go on and on. You can. And. Well, no, to- uh, I'm not inviting you in to collaborate. I'm going <laughs> to steal your blueprint, buddy. No, but here's a thing about talking about uh, following your passion. Uh, one of my other favorite bands of all time is Simple Minds. I just, if uh, if I were ever to work with Simple Minds, here's what I can tell you, Mike. I would literally retire the next day because I can't book anybody else that would literally surpass uh, Simple Minds. We'll, we'll elaborate more on this in three songs. So for uh, so for me, since I can't work with Simple Minds as a band, as a collective, because of the Live Nation issue, and they haven't been to Canada since uh, 2018, mm. uh, so follow them to uh, London, Ontario, and then the next night they performed at the, uh, now it's Meridian Hall, I think at the time it was called the Sony Centre. So back-to-back nights, and again, it's watching Simple Minds is, is a dream for me, and to work with them. Well, it's funny, be- I just saw Bratz. Have you seen this uh, documentary on the Brat Pack? No. Okay, because they, they close with a scene from The Breakfast oh. Club. So, okay. And uh, so what I try to do is to say, you know, if I can't get the whole band, then maybe I can pick them off one at a time. Right, right. So I announced, I think it was about a month ago, I've been after him for quite a while and read his book, which he just recently released called A Very Simple Mind, okay. which uh, Derek Forbes, for any Simple Minds fans out there, I mean, he was the bass player. I mean, Waterfront, actually, I was listening to Waterfront on, on the way here. I mean, the opening bass riff is if anybody hasn't heard it before, please do yourself a favor and listen to it. And uh, so Derek and I uh, have been communicating for about, let's say two years off and on. And uh, so when he released his book, gave me kind of more of an end to, to continue the conversation and fortunate enough to now we've booked Derek coming for uh, March 30th to do an intimate session where he's going to perform. He's got his own band and then plus talk about his book and all the simple mind stories and on and on. So amazing. And that's uh, at the classic at classic. He'll again, be part of our intimate series because the, the advantage of the intimate series, Cute. it has a, a Q and a component and of course uh, just a storytelling component. So it's like, what was it like? Cause everyone wants to be, you know, behind the, the curtain. Like, what was it like? What was it like? Okay, and you're, you're preaching to the choir on this one. So uh, individuals will actually get to go behind the curtain. So nice. Derek will basically tell everyone all the simple mind stories from the early days into their And people can days. ask questions, right? People can ask questions. So it's a two-way conversation. Right. So you can have a follow-up. So it, it works out. So any questions that anybody is dying to get answered, those shows are the ones that you can actually get to uh, get answered. So, and I, I now have, that's amazing. And I now have a review from uh, Midtown Gord who saw, again, he saw uh, Honeymoon Suite, Streetheart, and Lee Aaron at uh, the bowling alley yeah. there. Okay. 
I almost called it O'Connor Mall. <laughs> no, you, can, you, <laughs> like, you can't, you can't do that. It's not Mall, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is long gone, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. long gone. Uh, yeah. It became townhouses, yeah. as, as, as will happen in the city of Toronto. Okay. Uh, his review is, loved it, didn't know what to expect in a bowling alley, and it was perfect. Yeah. So that's a good... We, uh, uh, to to give you an, an example about how successful this series is, uh, for the first time ever, uh, we sold tickets to Nunavut. We had people come down from Nunavut. Uh, we sold tickets to uh, all provinces except Saskatchewan. So if there's anyone from They're Saskatchewan, lost. listen, please uh, make sure you at least purchase one ticket so I can state that we sold tickets yeah. every province. We sold tickets to 19 U.S. states. We sold tickets to Germany. Sold tickets to Australia, and unbeknownst to me, Michael Sadler, the elite singer of Saga, who we had on Thursday night, uh, says, hey, don't forget, uh, I also have people coming up from Venezuela for the show. So people came up from Venezuela. Wow. And the thing that was uh, kind of caught me off guard about the uh, German individuals that came over, mm-hmm. Saga literally lives in Germany. Okay. So I they're there constantly. They make a living in Germany. But these individuals from Germany wanted to see Saga perform in their hometown. That's wild. So that's why they that's, uh, uh, that's why they came over. Yeah. A uh, quick story about Saga back. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in the late '80s, early '90s. It must have been the sometime in the '80s. So Q107 at the time, a DJ had some type of contest where he basically stated, you know, name me your favorite Canadian band. And somebody called in and they said Saga. And the DJ goes, No, I said Canadian bands. They're not Canadian. Like even the Q107 DJ didn't even know. And you don't remember who it was. I, I don't know. But all I know is I got back to Saga. Yeah. And but the management team said, if you want to make it big, you have to get out of Canada. So to this day, there's still people that don't even know that Saga is a Canadian Wild. band. Wild. And uh, and they're again one of my favorites. They're great people and uh you know, just a great all around. And shout out to cousin Jano, who I think uh, listening uh, at home is a big saga head as well. But by the way, here's a fun fact about Midtown Gordon before we, we move on to the next jam is that his wife is from, and I hope I say this right, Tercera Azor? Yeah, Terceda. That's oh, a. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, he butchered that. That's, I butchered uh, it. He wrote it. I th- th- that's one of the. Because uh, the Azores, there's uh, nine islands. So that's the, the second. I come from the biggest one, which is okay. San Miguel. Okay. And uh, he comes from. Actually, it's known she, yeah. more for its, like, uh, I think, bullfighting. That's what they're known okay, for. Okay, that's Midtown Gord's wife. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. Uh, from right. there. Uh, good to know. Okay. This song, I'm going to dedicate it to Perry Lefko. He's got enough mentions. Don't because, make him cry. You're going to make well, him cry, it. Mike. I played it for him when he was over, yeah, yeah. and he cried. So oh. we'll talk about all the tears this song causes on the other side. And I have a story about them after the song. Okay. Do you need a Kleenex, Ed? I got Kleenex. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Again, no pun intended, right? If Midge is listening. I hope Midge is listening. By the way, Midge, great guest. I just said, Midge, if you're listening, you deliver. That guy gives good podcasts. And this is, again, I love how all our stories come full circle. You know where Midge lives? Uh, Portugal. Portugal. Yeah, he told me off the top there. Uh, I know. I expected it to be in England or something. Uh, no, he moved to Portugal X number of years ago. Wow. And that was when uh, Portugal was still alive in the Euros. And uh, they were yeah. talking about, uh, but they're long gone. Yeah. Now. Well, I mean, uh, they should have beat France, but that's a completely different story. And I, I told you before we recorded, because my 10-year-old is a huge uh, Cristiano Ronaldo freak. Like, he wears the jersey all the time. It's his favorite soccer player. And when he scores, both my son and Ronaldo, when they score, they say this, they go, Sue! And I think they're saying that because of you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I like that. That's uh, That'll be my story from now on. 
All right, when in Rome, as they say, not Portugal, when in Rome. Uh, by the way, Rome, capital of Italy. If you want authentic Italian food that's in Mississauga, not Rome, because Rome's a long way to go to get your uh, pasta, you do know Palma Pasta's in your backyard. Palma Pasta's in Mississauga and Oakville. Delicious, authentic Italian food. You do know that, right, Ed? Uh, absolutely. Love pasta. Pasta and Chinese food are the two, my two staples. Yeah. That, that I enjoy. Can I send you home with a frozen lasagna from Palma Pasta? You can send me home with any type of pasta. Well, I would never send you home with anything but Palma <laughs> Pasta, which is the best lasagna. So you're going to go home with a Palma Pasta. Talk to me about when in Rome. Uh, when in Rome, again, part of our intimate sessions where you can kind of find out how things came about. And the question that gets asked most often uh, to the artist is like, where does your name come from? And when in Rome came from the fact that when people in the UK, especially London, went to Manchester, they acted like they own the place, like because they're from London. So the band says, no, when you're in Manchester, you act like you're in Manchester. So, and then that kind of dovetailed into when, uh, in Rome. when in Rome, do as Romans do. Right. And I love both uh, Clive and Andrew, become some of my best friends, Clive Farrington and Andrew Mann. Clive lives out in uh, Orange County, California, and Andrew Mann lives out in London now, but they're originally from Manchester. And the news that I have, I'll break it here. Uh, they're going to come back uh, this year. So if any Win in Rome fans are listening, uh, keep a lookout for uh, a Win in Rome date. But they will be back this year. They'll be back. Yeah, okay. they'll, they'll be back. And recently, Perry Lefko was excited to tell me he's not the only one who cries during that song. No. Uh, another quick story uh, during a When in Rome show is on, uh, we usually do our intimate shows on Sunday night. So got a call from a, uh, a mutual friend of mine and uh, Cujo. Um, Curtis Joseph. Joseph. And uh, my friend goes, you know, I just received a call from Curtis. Uh, his wife is the biggest When in Rome fan. So is it possible that they can attend? Of course, all our shows uh, sell out. And what am I going to say? No, Curtis Jones, and you can't come. You don't say no to Curtis. Yeah, I, so they came, and his wife, uh, Stephanie, comes running in. She gives me a big hug. She goes, I love you. I go, no, it's not me you love. It's the two gentlemen in the, in the room. <laughs> so I, I took her in, yeah. and so she was literally, like, crying, saying, you know, of course, Promise and When Rome is her favorite band. And then she goes, you know, people always say how tough Curtis is. Every time when in Rome plays on the radio and I'm of course sing along with it and I look at Curtis and you should see the stream of tears just running down his face. And Ujo if only cries. people knew that he's, I mean, the effect that this song also has on him. And uh, <laughs> at the end of the night, we used to do a, a raffle draw for a custom guitars of the band and she purchased, I don't know, a whole slew. I mean, she must've spent hundreds of dollars on purchasing these uh, raffle tickets for the guitar. Yeah. And uh, guess who won? She won. Amazing. Not, not, not well, planned. I mean, it's just no, one of those she, things. Uh, stuff the ballot uh, box, she stuffed the ballot box. Legal. That's legal. Yeah. And, uh, and she took <laughs> the customized, uh, when wow. in Rome guitar home. So I love was, that story because it's true. You know, these athletes, they present this tough exterior or whatever, but then meanwhile, they're listening to a song like that and they're weeping like a baby. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And, uh, they've, uh, haven't, they haven't been back since, but we've brought back, uh, when in Rome X number of times. And again, they're coming back just because of the demand. They uh, ran the promise and heaven knows they're coming out with a new album. So we're going to be part of that uh, uh, release party for them. Okay, amazing. You're kicking ass. We have the anti-penultimate song here. But first, I'm just going to give you a gift. I gave you the lasagna. I gave you the beer. This brown book right there is the history of Toronto Maple Leafs baseball. It's an awesome book. They play at Christie Pitts. I was there last Sunday. I'll be there again in early August. I think it's August 4th. Uh, I'm throwing out the first pitch, and I'll be broadcasting from just beyond the left field fence. Awesome baseball. No ticket required. You can have a beer, grab a dog, sit on the uh, the hills at Christie Pitts and take in some amazing baseball. And uh, we, we'd love to have everybody out there. Ed, you would love it. It'll find a good place in my bookshelf. Well, you got to read it first. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, I was thinking, uh, yeah, Cujo. I was thinking, oh, I would love to get Cujo on Toronto Mike and just play that song and see what happens. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm thinking. But then I'm going to think, I'm going to pitch something to you before the anti penultimate jam. I just like to say the word anti penultimate, but I'm going to pitch this to you. Cause so I had mid year on, I had honeymoon suite on, but none of this had anything to do with Ed Souza, even though they were 
doing events that you promote. So mm-hmm. we should collaborate in that when you bring an artist to Toronto, there should be an element where either I come to Classic Bowl and record them or they come here. But we work something out where to promote other stuff at Classic Bowl and their concert, they come on Toronto Mike. Yeah. Like we should have this. Sounds sounds like a plan. I don't have any issues with that. As long as the artist is okay with that, Obviously, I, 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 I'm, I'm okay with that. We can't handcuff him yeah, and drag yeah. Well, him down I here. mean, we can because I can always say, you know, you're not coming back. But depending how big the artist, like, <laughs> I would, I bike my gear to Christy Pitts and set up. I would 100% bike my gear to Classic Bowl set up to talk to some great artists that are going to be, uh, maybe they're doing a sound check or something. Yeah, and, listen, uh, Derek Forbes being one of them, right? I mean, yeah. how many times do you get an opportunity to speak to uh, so, Simple So I'm Minds? just saying, you and I, this Toronto Mike Ed Souza collaboration. collaboration, too much synergy for me. <laughs> uh, I just can't get enough of this. I can't get enough. <laughs> Yeah, baby, here we go. The live stream says all your songs are bangers, and they really are. They're all bangers. mode playing the classic ball uh well you never know i've reached out actually to uh, vince clark who is the uh the principal writer on the debut album yeah. including just can't get enough so the possibility uh, uh does exist tell me why you uh why you love this song well you know 1981 again the cf and y connection and regardless if individuals don't like this genre there's no way individuals can't like this song. Right. It's it's so catchy, and uh, I'm pretty certain that it's not David Gahan's favorite song to sing, and maybe Martin Gore to play because it wasn't really theirs. It was Vince Clark's. But, it, it, I mean, all you have to do is go to the Depeche Mode show and see exactly which show, uh, sorry, which song has the most influence on the, on the attendees. And this is... This basically does this one and enjoy the silence. I mean, personal Jesus is is okay. I mean, to me, people are people. When I say okay in relation to this one, but it's this one and, and enjoy this the silence. This is the banger. This, this is, is the, the banger. Depeche yeah, Mode there's banger, no without a doubt. And it's it's debut album. I mean, they've the thing with Depeche Mode is as opposed to Simple Minds, and I tell this to everyone as well. And I love both bands. Simple Minds is still putting out tremendous work. Uh, Solstice Kiss. Uh, maybe when you're bored, Mike, on YouTube, if you haven't listened to it, it's off their new album, Direction yeah. of a Heart. It's incredible. It's they tough pay- for these legacy bands, though, when they have great new music because everybody just wants the hits. Yeah. It's that's, tough. That, that's a problem because they have to try to incorporate at least a song or two into their set list. Depeche Mode usually incorporates about four or five into their set list. Which then, every time you incorporate a song, you have two options, which is to include, uh, sorry, increase the set list time, which because of curfews and all that, they really can't, in some cases, make it much longer, or they have to, in a sense, eliminate one of the fan favorites. And fans are not interested in, uh, in that. But this is a song that just, you know, it gets everybody moving. It's got my heart rate uh, <laughs> pumping here. Uh, call my doctor. This can't be healthy. Okay. Uh, I want to shout out again. Uh, I don't know why I'm shouting this out. I've talked about it a couple of times. But if anyone listening wants to hear more love for Ed Souza, you'll hear it in the mid-year episode of Toronto Mike, which was very recent. It was episode 1514. This one's 1521. That's how recent it was. Mike chats. This is what the, the description I wrote at the time. Mike chats with musician mid-year about Ultravox. Vienna, of course, one of the, the big Ultravox songs. Uh, the Passing of Criss Cross. Do they know it's Christmas? That story, I feel like Bob Geldof hogs all the oxygen. He does. He, and Mitch, Mitch is a type of individual that he... You lets him? He, he lets him. That's, it's not... Listen, if that uh, floats Bob's boat, you know, more power to Bob, but it has no effect on Mitch. But make no mistake, the song Do They Know It's Christmas, the primary composer is Midge, Midge. Year, of yes. course. Okay, we know this. I, I, uh, last time Midge, I brought Midge to the Elmo, mm-hmm. it just him and I in the green room, and so he's sitting on the couch, I'm just standing up, and I go to Midge, I go, Midge, do you ever pinch yourself that you're Midge? <laughs> <laughs> he looks at me, he's got a big grin on his face, he says, no, you know what, I've never done that, but 
never stop pinching yourself. He goes, every time I meet an artist that I just love their work, I literally pinch myself. And he also says, he goes back to Scotland quite often to walk the same sidewalks because oh. he says... He never wants his feet to leave the ground. And well, that's, that's, nice. that's the type of individual. Well, if, if anybody hasn't met Midge, do yourself a favor. Go head down to Susa Palooza on August 16th. It's not a promo because the show is doing exceptionally well. Like, are also, there tickets available? I don't want yes, to tease people. Yeah, they, they okay, go where on, do they go uh, if they want to uh, grab uh, that last ticket? Uh, Elmacombo.com. How did you get hooked up with the Elma Combo? Uh, through a mutual friend. Um, Michael Weckerly and I have become really good friends, so he really enjoyed the work. You know, his mom taught at my high school, which makes really? me... I don't know if he went to my high school because he's a bit older than me, but uh, his mom, Mrs. Weckerly, who's no longer with us, sadly just passed away, but she taught at Michael Power High yeah, School when the, I was there. Uh, a great gentleman. So again, we got connected through uh, a mutual friend, and uh, Michael really enjoyed the work that uh, that we do, so he asked if uh, I'd be interested in assisting bringing uh, you know, well-known artists to, yeah, like uh, rough trade. I know these are great uh, I shows. Mean, uh, mid year, you know, uh, mid year. You mean ABC? A quick story about ABC. Yeah. So had uh, Martin and I were together for four days because he was here for two days, and that was the same uh, show that Midge was performing. Because if anybody hasn't been to the Elmo, do yourself a favor, head there because the Elmo has two stages: a, a lower stage and an upper stage. Right. So for the first time in history, I had Midge performing on the lower stage, mm -hmm. same capacity, everything's basically identical. Does that, that lower stage looks like it's a smaller room, no? I know, okay. because there's not as, kind. it's just laid out differently, but capacity-wise is the same. Okay, I trust you. So the uh, so we had Midge performing from uh, seven until 8.30, okay. and then uh, ABC performing from nine o'clock until about 10.30. Oh, so you can go to both. You can go to both. You need two separate tickets, but you could go to both shows. It's like a double header, but yeah, uh, two separate yeah. tickets. And uh, so had Martin Fry, uh, with me for four days off on because they of course arrived uh, a day earlier get everything set up and stayed uh, the day after the show so I picked him up personally from the airport him and his wife so I have Martin you know beside me and when I was a kid growing up after quote unquote my uh, BTO days yeah the the guy that I really wanted to be was uh, Brian Ferry from Roxy Music I just, he's the James Bond of music. I really, I mean, he's so cool. Just Sharp dresser. Sorry, everything, right? No hats, <laughs> but just love. But he's about, I think, 18, close to 20 years older than I am. And then when ABC came out in the early 80s, all of a sudden I'm like going, Martin Fry, he's like a, a much younger version to Brian Ferry, but same thing, very cool, really sh the style. sharply, just the style, right? Right. And then you fast forward to, you know, a year ago, a year and a half ago, here I am with Martin Fry. So he's sitting in my car and I'm looking at him and I'm like going, should I tell him that I wanted to be him? <laughs> I don't know if that's cool. It's right? not a cool move. It's not a cool move. But internally, you know, the fanboy comes out of you and you're saying, you know, what? this is this is cool to have Martin Fry. And he's again, typical. Did you tell him? Just, no, no, I never told him. Okay. So if he's less than I think Martin, you made yeah. the right move there. Yeah. And, that creeps people out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so, but yeah, great, great, great gentleman. And uh, so fortunate enough to have him for uh, for a couple of the shows that, that we had. And we've had uh, another act that one of my favorites that I was fortunate enough to bring up for some show, Information Society out of the U.S. Nobody had been able to bring him up to Canada. Uh, so a China crisis, uh, bring him every year to, uh, to the only one. As a matter of fact, last year for the first time since uh, I believe was 84 four maybe 86 you're living the life that you're they doing brought, it man that they brought their full band so normally they come with a fourth piece this time they came with their full six piece band just to do our shows they flew in on the friday they flew back to the uk on the monday they just do our shows uh spano ballet guys uh steve norman yeah uh did me a solid Dude. he flew in from uh from london uh on the friday flew back to london on the monday just did our show and then flew back uh did no other shows so we're fortunate enough to that individuals i can pick up the phone and that's how uh we got connected with uh, the art of noise um uh, book jesus jones right here right uh, right now. here right now and uh seems a little late era for you though i feel uh, but uh, right here right like, now we'll kind of, but, but, but keeping in mind that yeah. they weren't grunge <laughs> they were not grunge. so they're they trying to kind of yeah. keep that 80s right. kind of vibe yeah. going well, i was just hanging on by my fingernails i said great jesus jones thanks for doing me a solid right <laughs> <laughs> and uh so got connected with them x number of years ago so ian baker who's the the leader of the band and the the keyboard player yeah so we hit it off like we do and we're fortunate enough to hit it off with every band became really good friends and when i reached out to the art of noise yeah 
And unbeknownst to me, Ian Peel from Art of Noise is one of the best mates of Ian Baker from Jesus Jones. Oh, the Ian's all hang out yeah. together. So then Ian from Art of Noise <laughs> goes to Ian Baker and says, I got contacted from, you know, this Ed Sousa guy from Canada. We kind of heard of him, you know, don't really yeah. know much about him, but you've performed. What's he like? And Ian Baker said, when Ed calls, you just go. That's and, the highest compliment. Yeah, right and then all of a sudden, Your get, reputation con- yeah, get contacted it. and uh, they said, okay, we'll do the show. Same thing. They flew in, just did our, our uh, McBowl concert on the Saturday night. I kept them over for our secret show. Nobody knew about it on the Sunday wow. and uh, they flew back on the Monday. So of the attainable acts, like let's not dream in Technicolor here, but of the attainable acts, who's the highest on your list that you think you should be able to get in and you're working on it? Uh, or is this uh, too confidential? No, course? no. I mean, to be honest with you, we start with a blank canvas. Right. There's really nothing, like you mentioned at the outset about The Cure. I mean, yeah. The Cure is on the list. So it's not a matter of them not being But they, they want seven figures. No, no. but uh, You don't the, dabble in that game, No, but, but that doesn't matter. The fee... When I say it doesn't matter, it doesn't right. restrict you from placing them on that canvas. Sure. Right? If all of a sudden... Dream through, big. Yeah, exactly. Through a connection, maybe through a sponsor, maybe through a private function. Can you reunite Oasis and bring them in? <laughs> that Imagine I, Classic that, Bowl Oasis. You could charge... Uh, I think you could charge $100,000 yeah, a ticket. I, I don't think even Jesus Christ could put them back together. <laughs> that's, uh, maybe that, Jesus that, Jones. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Funny thing about that. <laughs> Which actually, if Andrew Clowater is listening, I got to give him credit. For, he's our official photographer. If anybody hasn't seen Andrew's work, please uh, uh, please see some of Andrew's uh, photos. So uh, we booked Jesus Jones recently to perform at Revival, which is the club downtown. Right. And on Easter weekend, so we had Jesus Jones performing in a church in an altar on Easter weekend. Wow. Like you can't. Sacrilicious. <laughs> you know, uh, how can you get, I don't know. It's just one oh, of those wow. things okay. that. Now I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, I'm just brainstorming <laughs> here, but let's pretend, I don't know, you're having beers in a British pub or something and Noel, no, yeah, Noel's there. Yeah, Noel's there. And not he Liam, likes right? you, not yeah. Liam. So Noel's yeah. there. Because I think Noel's the holdout here. Yeah, I think yeah. Liam would do it for the money or whatever. But okay, so you and him, I don't know, you hit it off and he trusts you and you tell him some of the things. You guys have a great time. You can't understand what he's saying, but you're having a great conversation, okay? Let's Let's say this conversation goes to a point where he says, Ed, I like you. All right. But you're missing the point, Mike. What? What was the point that I said at the outset? <laughs> you got to have a passion for the music. I, exactly. But that's not grunge. I, no, no, no. But that's Oasis is, you know, they're okay, but so I... So you don't even, you won't even, so I understand. I can actually now, psychologically, just being an armchair like psychologist listening to you, your, your music was destroyed by grunge no wonder you hate grunge okay <laughs> but Britpop is a whole separate animal it's a separate animal but even within Britpop mm. there's certain acts that just don't here's one that I reached out to I mean not to say it's not gonna happen uh, I reached out to Lamal from Kajagugu which they've never ever performed in North America and for those that don't know Kajagugu they had uh, the song called Too Shy which is one of my favorite songs okay. and uh, Nick Betts plays with uh, Howard Jones. So every time Howard Jones comes to Canada to perform, what do they play? Too Shy. Right. And so like bands like that. So again, I have to have a reason to get up in the morning. If I'm just going to get up to book a band that somebody else likes, right. well, let okay, them get so up you, in the morning. All right. So, because I was going to ask like- if But Simply Red. Simply, simply red. red. I really love. So Mick Hucknall, uh, okay. potentially. Yeah. Simply Red, I really, really enjoy. I envision more Toronto Mike uh, Ed Souza collaborations in the future because I really like how you're wired. I see. I think uh, you're an inspiration to me here. And let's kick out your penultimate. I was almost gonna, what is it now? It's a penultimate jam, and we'll talk more about this band on the other side. <laughs>
this song <laughs> new gold dream simple uh, mind this is if anybody's a simple minds fan like the new gold dream album every single track is beyond a banger and uh i remember back i believe it was 84 it was a double bill them and china crisis at massey hall they had four consecutive sold out nights which back in the day was kind of unheard of until i think bare naked ladies broke the record they beat the rush record i believe uh, but back then, that was that was a, quite a do, and uh, and sitting in the cheapest seats, because you know, of course, having going to high school and having a, uh, a part time job, so you had to really pick the shows and you had to buy the the cheapest possible seat. So I might have been sitting in the roof instead of actually inside Massey Hall. Mm-hmm. But I distinctly remember, like, I mean, it was again as I'm being transported back there. It, it was, and then fast forward to having China Crisis come regularly and we talk about how they perform those simple minds as a support act on multiple occasions and the uh, jesus jones road manager was touring with simple minds uh, just this past summer with because he does work for delamitri another scottish band so i told him i said listen get jim and charlie i need something from them Right. So they personalized a uh, uh, a concert T-shirt for me. So and when uh, Sebastian came over to a history not too long ago, he also works with them, another Scottish band. So he presented me with the Jim and Charlie T-shirt. So inch by inch, I'm kind of uh, getting closer. But uh, Simple Minds is again, they're Simple Minds. It, it just it, it's it, every single thing that they've done has been has been beyond incredible i just is this your favorite band of all time no flock of seagulls are a oh, spoiler uh, yeah, yeah, one yeah. more song to go uh, yeah flock of seagulls are my favorite band of all but they're uh yeah. it's like Simple one and minds, it's one a, like one, one exactly it's like one and one a it, there's no uh the thing with difference between simple minds and a flock of seagulls unfortunately because of the the mix in the flock of seagulls as far as the band you know they split up they had some you know they had some issues that you know, people that know the band they know what issues there were whereas the two principles of simple minds which is uh jim and charlie they've continued on so they kept that unit together they brought in x number of different members but you know jim is the principal songwriter you know charlie of course does all the music so collectively they've continued on whereas with the flock of seagulls mike is the kind of the last but he's you know he wrote all flock of seagull songs he had his brother in the and he band. owns the name and he owns the name he had his brother was in the band ask and, randy backman how important that yeah. is and uh <laughs> so but the, again the difference is so uh, flock of seagulls stopped creating new music even though mike is getting back hopefully they'll release a new album this year where simple minds right. just continued on so right. the library is a lot more extensive than uh, than the flock I mentioned that homework, and I wanted to bring back Robert Lawson. So there is an episode of Toronto Mike with Randy Backman, and it was a, it's a great episode. You should check this out. I know you're a big BTO fan. Then I had a gentleman named Robert Lawson who wrote a, he wrote a great book about the Guess Who, who asked if he could come over and fact check the Randy Backman episode. And then that, so now there's an episode of Robert Lawson, the official fact checker of the Toronto Mike podcast, fact checking. Randy Backman's episode. So I would encourage you to listen to both. I'm just signing you homework here. I think if you're a BTO head, you'll love Randy Backman's know. episode and you might enjoy the uh, the fact check of the and episode. And one of the, the reasons that I really want to meet Randy, besides telling him that, that in, from a musical standpoint, he was my first love. BTO was my first love. Right. Uh, I remember seeing him back in, I believe it was 2012, when he was doing one of his story uh, telling tours. He was a he, great story. Yeah, teller. and he was in Oakville performing at the uh, the art center so right. i'm sitting there and yeah. he's telling a story how say american woman came about and all that yeah kitchener i want to say uh, yeah, yeah it was kitchener it was yeah. like a, i think a curling yeah, rink you or told something. me the story yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and you know the guitar string broke and all that yeah so some 
sitting there, I'm like going, wow, this is a great story, but I wish I could follow up and ask Randy a question. But because right. of the capacity, I think it's about four or 500, you really can't have a two-way conversation in that type of setting. Right. So that's where the genesis for the R&B oh. sessions came about. Okay. So I said, if I make it more intimate to 100 and 100 some odd people, I can control it. And then the artist gets really close to the fan. The fan gets closer to but the but artist. But do people put up their hands and then someone comes over with oh, a The way I actually started it off was because I was a little hesitant to hand anybody the microphone because you didn't know what was coming out the other side. F. Trudeau. Yeah. And uh, so what I got them to do at the entrance to the stage, they actually wrote their question on, on a little piece of paper. Right. Basically stating their name and what their question was. So I was the one reading the questions. Okay. But because we have such a loyal following right. and you can trust your but not, uh, now you can kind of trust your audience and the right. audience kind of knows because then, you know, it kind of be part of the pun of a black ball not to attend any more of our shows. So they're very cognizant of that. Right. You don't so want to get banned from classic bowl. Exactly. exactly. No, That'd God forbid. <laughs> so then now basically they absolutely, they, uh, raise their hand and get in the microphone and yeah. then they uh like the art of noise worked out really really well how uh like gary had the principal in the band along with jj gary had absolutely no money he moved in with jj and all of a sudden they kind of started and gary's an engineer by trade but he says i was dead broke didn't have any money so right. i just kind of was renting a room from jj's house and then that kind of started the you know and trevor horn and all that uh came about so from there, those are kind of things that you would never know unless you attend uh, one of these. No, I, I'm digging it. So like if people say, I got to get a, in on this classic bowl Mississauga action, like is there a, we a website? Yeah, they can go to? on uh, classicbowl.com. We have a dedicated uh, a rock and bowl sessions page. We have a dedicated uh, McBowl page. We also have a dedicated pop-up show page, which is the other uh, series that we do. Hence the name. These shows just pop up. The next one we have coming up is The Box on August the 11th. I mean, Amazing. So I get contacted by artists and they say, Ed, we're looking for a show. Can you just give us a show? So they just pop up. So no tickets. Basically, they receive an email confirmation of uh, of their purchase. They show up. Again, we limit to 100 some odd people. So the next one we have for that is uh, the box. But that one's sold out. So you, spoiler You want alert. a little fun fact here, Ed? Okay, so uh, you can't get in on that one. But uh, quick fun fact for you, because you said the box. And I'm thinking, now I'm thinking of a big box hit where Sass Jordan is singing back of vo vocals, okay? And I'm thinking of the fun fact that Sass Jordan's husband is the lead singer for the current iteration, the rogue iteration of the Guess Who. No. Yep. That is a fun fact for you. Then and no. even Robert Lawson will fact check that and tell you I'm correct. The so, only thing that John Mark said about Sat Jordan, he knew she was a talent from the first time he heard her. But when they did the video, and I think for Closer Together, yeah, on somewhere, top of a no, but it was, oh. but it was somewhere in the Caribbean. Okay. And uh, Sat Closer Jordan didn't together. go. Uh, Sat oh. Jordan was literally the, something to do with the vocals or something to that effect that she really wasn't uh, involved with. But John Marks stated that he knew right away. She wasn't long. For she the was box. on her way. Yeah, she was on her way. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah. And then we got one more jam to go. More questions on the other side. But Ed, I'll tell you right now, I've thoroughly enjoyed learning more about you. I was very curious about Ed Souza, this guy who's booking uh, Spoons and Honeymoon Suite and all these acts like the band were about to play. I learned a lot more about you. Uh, I think you and I will be uh, doing stuff together in the future. And I appreciate you dropping by to uh, kick out these jams with me, man. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Perry. Thanks. Yeah, Perry, who sent the, uh, <laughs> the orders. Okay. You know, Perry's brother was in the lowest of the low documentary. I close out. Oh, Elliot? Episode, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. And uh, I'm a little peeved off because Elliot, who says he loves Toronto Mike and listens and even reviewed it with a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Elliot refuses to come on Toronto Mike. I'm like, come on, your brother's crying on Toronto Mike. When in Rome, let's go, buddy. So Elliot left. Cool. If you're out there listening, Toronto Mike needs to collect those stories. So it's uh, you could do it now or you could do it later, but it's going to happen eventually. Hey, before I kick out this final jam, I bet you people know exactly what's coming too. I will give you a piece of advice, Ed. If you have any old electronics, old cables, old uh, devices in a drawer at home or in a box at home, don't throw them in the garbage. Because those chemicals end up in our landfill. Go to recyclemyelectronics.ca, put in your postal code, and they'll say, hey, here's a depot near you. You can drop them off to be properly and safely recycled. You got that, Ed? Got it. All right, let's kick out one more. What a surprise. This is number one, mate. He 
you gotta sing this one, okay, Ed? Come on. <laughs> Real loud. Let's go. I've actually been on stage singing this song with Mike. Well, you might, can do it, you can might do it, do it again. Yeah, yeah, I might do it again at Susa Palouse on August 17th. Oh, I was going to say, you could do it right now with this mic. Mike, I just ruined that no, for wait, you. I wanted you to do that. It sounded great. I love it when passionate bands sing out their belt out their favorite songs. Okay, Flock of Seagulls. True or false? You're the reason Gord Depp is a guitarist in a Flock of Seagulls. A today. Quick, quick story about that. So, uh, it was about the McCall concert series. So, back, I believe it was the second year, I contacted Mike. I said, Mike, uh, do you want to come up? And, uh, you know, perform as part of the series. He goes, which date? So I gave him a date and he said, Ed, I'm already booked for that date. So I go, okay, well, we'll work on a, a different date for a different show. He goes, okay. And then the show sold out with, again, with Spoons and Honeymoon Suite on the Saturday night. So I contacted Mike again. I said, Mike, you know what? What about Sunday? He goes, yeah, Sunday I'm fine because the Saturday show is in New Jersey. So I can catch an early flight out of New York, uh, head over. And I said, perfect. So I go, I'll get you a backup band. So he goes, are they any good? He didn't know who they were, right? So I said, yeah, I'll get you the spoons. They're really, really good. So he, the spoons had a full set. Then Mike had sent five songs for them to, uh, to kind of get working on. So they performed after the show and they went exceptionally well. So after the show, they, they just started talking, right? Fast forward to a little while later, uh, Mike, Mike's looking for a new lead guitarist. And he knows the kind of work that uh, Gord does. So Gord's in Italy with his fiance at the time, Meg, who's now his wife. Uh, contacts Gord and he says, how would you like to be on a flock of seagulls? So Gord wow. contacts me. He goes, Ed, guess what? I said, what? He goes, Mike just contacted me. Meanwhile, I knew what it was about. And uh, so I go, what'd you say? He goes, what do you think I said? And uh, so that's how that came wow, out. Wow, you did that. Because even though, uh, for those Flock and Spoons fans, will know, and again, coming full circle, I love how this, this all kind of uh, is dovetailing into each other. Uh, the police picnic. Yeah. Back in, I believe it was 82. And that's a Gary's presentation. Yes. On the same bill was the Flock of Seagulls and the Spoons. But they never, they didn't know each other. They didn't talk to each other at different times, whatever. Wow. So they didn't really know each other. Even though there's a photo circulating of the Spoons and Flock of Seagulls together. So Mike didn't know anything about the Spoons or Gort specifically. And so when I put them together and then next thing you know, so you have uh, literally my favorite Canadian band put yeah. together with my favorite band. So that's, uh, it, it was, it, it, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. And to this day, so I've seen, actually went with Gort for, uh, flew with Gort for his first U.S. show with a flock of seagulls. It was in Chicago back and I think it was 2017, give or take 2018, because time goes by really quick. And uh, in Chicago, so it was them and the Romantics, a double bill. So that worked out. Uh, oh, what I like about that. Oh, my goodness. Now, do they play any, uh, do they play Nova Heart during no, the flock of no, seagulls show? Because, no, no. you know, I 
think Styx will play like a Criminal Mind or something like that when when Gowan's singing. The, the, I guess they could. I just wondered, but it, it's a matter. But their of, crowd doesn't know it. Uh, yeah, anymore. their crowd, especially. The, uh, I mean, even though it's getting kind of a little more recognizable, uh, so it, eventually I think it may happen. But Mike's now playing his right. uh, three uh, new songs that's going to be in the the new album. Hopefully, again, will come out this year, which is really really good songs. But I'm kind of biased. I, I really enjoy them. Of course, but you're that super kind biased. Of, uh, that's the whole wonderful <laughs> thing about art. Super biased. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, any chance we get uh, Gowan at the Classic Bowl? Uh, yeah, days. Uh, We've had outreach previously, uh, time-wise, because of his schedule uh, with sticks. Right. Always, sometimes gets uh, gets in the way, but it's it, it's a possibility. As a matter of fact, for McBull for 2025, we already have uh, well, we have three artists a day, so six already booked, and three the ink is drying, so hey. it's basically all all kind of done. You done gotta already. bring in uh, Tom Cochran. The thing with if it's Tom Cochran or, or I guess Gowan to some <laughs> extent, here's yeah. what I like to do. Yeah. I like to bring in artists who don't necessarily play around the area that often, right. because although I, you know, Cochran rarely plays Toronto. He, he doesn't like playing home in his hometown. No, yeah, you're right. He might. He'll go. Maybe you're lucky if he's in Markham or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. But uh, and, and but for me, I like to bring, let's say, Streetheart, who really never comes up this way, right. uh, like I did with, say, Harlequin. Right. Uh, is it like a West? Uh, uh, yeah, like it, they're yeah. kind of, you know, they're based uh, West Coast. So it make it, like even Strange Advance when. Uh, when I kind of spoke to Drew, and that took about a year and a half to convince them to to go back on the road, and but now they're uh, you know they just headlined the uh, Sound of Music in in Burlington a couple of weeks ago. They're coming back to Markham on September the twenty eighth. So people get your they're at the Flato Theater in Markham. So people get your tickets for that. They're going to be in uh, Ottawa the night before. They're going to be in Montreal the day I think on so twenty six Montreal, twenty seven Ottawa, twenty eight in Markham. And uh, so again, these I like to bring acts in that don't necessarily play around the area that much. Love this very much, Ed. Uh, thanks for doing this again. And uh, I got to get my ass to Classic Bowl. And yeah, yeah. You, I, you I, have an open invitation. Oh my God! I, look, can I sing uh, "Iran" with uh, Flock of Seagulls? Uh, well, you know what? Come on, uh, August seventeenth as part of Susafalusa because we're really looking oh. forward to that. Well, I that, need to meet Midge. I need a photo yeah, of Midge here. Yeah, for that, the, uh, uh, the so again, if people are not uh, familiar with it, just a quick plug, Mike. So on uh, Friday, August the sixteenth, uh, Midge is uh, uh, Midge is coming. Plus his uh, bandmates will be Band in the Box. So it'll be a full electronic set along with uh, Chalk Circle. Well, yeah, I will just shout out Chris Tate as an FOTM himself. Yeah. And uh, quick story on Chris Tate. Yeah. Not not really that long. Uh, Chris, I'll see you tomorrow because we have a, a private show. Say hi for me. Uh, with 5440 and wow. uh, Chalk Circle. So we have a private show tomorrow. That's a great uh, deal. Uh, right that we're doing. And then Canada's new sensation, as I call them, 416. Uh, on uh, Friday night and then on Saturday night we have a flock of seagulls spoons and Vieira she's an incredible solo violinist so get your tickets all at elmacombo.com elmacombo.com thank you Mr. Souza and that brings us to the end of our 1,521st show you can follow me on uh, Twitter, Blue Sky. I'm at Toronto Mike, but go to torontomike.com for your Toronto Mike needs much love to all who made this possible? That's Great Lakes Brewery, Palma Pasta, RecycleMyElectronics.ca, the Toronto Maple Leafs baseball team, and Ed, I forgot to give you your measuring tape from Ridley Funeral Home. Oh, thank you. Measure what you wish. <laughs> See you all. Who's up next, Ed? I should do this stuff before I record, but uh, oh, this is exciting. Longtime CBC journalist Robert Fisher makes his Toronto Mike debut. That's the next episode. See you all. I wonder if he's going to kick out any flock of seagulls. <laughs> do it. Do it. See you all then. And your smile is fine and it's just like mine and it won't go away Cause everything is rosy and green Well I've kissed you in France and I've kissed Go down on Sacre-Cœur